2025 has been a pretty exciting time for new technologies, right, that are being applied to the ancient world. Obviously, the Beyond E, me, you know, this uh, synthetic aperture radar scanning, the, the, the cuff rate pyramid, these extraordinary claims about massive superstructures deep in the, in the Giza Plateau, took the world by storm, certainly took um, mainstream media's attention by storm. I was in Egypt when this came out. It was kind of crazy. We were in Egypt and just this was all of a sudden it just blew up. I was getting messages out of everywhere saying, have you seen these claims? And I'm like literally sitting in a hotel looking at the, the middle pyramid, uh, the, the cuff rate pyramid. Um, it's quite crazy. I, didn't, I typically don't just dive into things and offer an opinion on them without uh, being sort of having my own research or understanding it. At the time, I didn't really understand a lot of the research. I got invited to the whole Pierce Morgan debate thing, and I told him I'm not, particularly, I'm not particularly interested in mainstream media in the first place, but I did get invited to that, and I said, look, I don't have much to say about it or to offer about it, but it's an interesting application for new technology. That's not the only thing that's happening this year. Uh, obviously, you've also got the news about the exploration of the big void uh, in the Great Pyramid, right? So this is the result of the muon detection and the work of the Scan Pyramids team that's been going on for the last almost 10 years at this point. And, you know, our own Matt Bell, who's here, is, is stepping up to help fund some of the robotics research in that, which is just epic. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, and th say thanks to Matt for that. He's, the man is single-handedly moving this investigation along with his, his patronage of the, the vase scan projects and, and acquiring these vases, as well as being a patron now of this type of research. It's fantastic. But this is an application in new technology as well that's happening. You could probably throw into this also just the vase scan project, right? We're getting in and scanning more and more vases and more and more museums. The data set's growing. We've got other scientists getting involved. Max Zamolov. I'm going to get into a lot of that stuff uh, in my classroom session tomorrow. And then, of course, if you watched Atlantica last night, it looks like we've got applications of more satellite technology, and Atlantis might have been discovered, or it might be a, certainly a big step forward in the search for that. Um, so all of that's really interesting um, to see that, but what's, what's interesting to me is, is, you know, what if I told you a couple of things, that a massive ancient underground structure in Egypt has already been discovered, that its discovery was done through scanning technology. In fact, it's been scanned several times with technology just like these technologies that you've been hearing about, and it's absolutely been confirmed to exist. This also isn't something new. It's not something that you could consider wildly speculative. It's not something that is coming out of nowhere, which you could, we can definitely say, like the Khafre Pyramid stuff, is, it's just like nobody expected to see giant shafts and cubes and things 600 meters under the ground. But this is something instead has been documented extensively throughout history, including in antiquity. And in our modern era, it's something that's been sought after by a, a very small but select group of individuals. This structure is not just any old thing in Egypt. It's something that is said to exceed in grandeur all of the wonders of the ancient world, and I am including the pyramids of Giza in that. And that if its discovery were true, it really should represent the biggest discovery of at least the 21st century, if not, dare I say, the millennium. The biggest discovery in a thousand years. And that somewhat scandalously, which we'll get into, its discovery has been suppressed and it's been covered up. Yet, with the advent of these new technologies, these, uh, there are opportunities remaining to explore this. Anyone, I'm sure some of you know what I'm going to talk about. Anyone, any guesses? You got it. So, to me, the biggest opportunity out there and one of the craziest stories that very few people have heard is that about the great labyrinth of ancient Egypt. And when you hear the word labyrinth, this isn't something that... Is that my five-minute bell already? <laughs> this isn't something that, you know, the labyrinth of ancient Egypt isn't the thing that comes to mind straight away. When you think of labyrinth, a lot of people might go here to when movies were good and you could make weird things with David Bowie and Jim Henson pop puppets and make crazy movies. One of my favorites from my childhood. I'm kind of dating myself with some of this, I think. And, of course, the other thing that pops to, to mind when you think of the labyrinth is where the actual entomology of the word labyrinth comes from, which of course is the Cretan labyrinth. 